In June 1989, a Polaroid picture of an unidentified woman and a young boy, gagged with duct tape inside a van, was discovered in a parking lot in Florida. This mortifying image was highly suspected to be connected to Tara Calico's disappearance, who was missing the year before the discovery of the Polaroid picture. Although there were speculations from the relatives of the missing persons, the two subjects in the photo were never identified. Welcome to Eventful Insights. In today's video, we're going to be investigating the eerie case of Tara Calico and how this teenage girl suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Before we try and figure out what really happened, why do you think it's hard to recover a missing person? Do you think there's still hope for Tara to be found even after three decades? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. On the morning of September 20th, 1988, Calico left her residence around 9.30 a.m. to embark on her customary bike ride along New Mexico State Road 47. This had become a daily routine for her, often accompanied by her mother, Patty Dowell. However, Dowell ceased biking with Calico due to a distressing encounter with a motorist she believed was stalking them. She cautioned her daughter to consider carrying mace for protection, a suggestion that Calico declined. On the day Calico disappeared, she had instructed her mother to come find her if she hadn't returned home by noon, as she had plans to play tennis with her boyfriend at 12.30 p.m. When Calico didn't return as expected, Dole began searching for her along her usual bike route, but couldn't locate her. Consequently, she contacted the police. Later on, fragments of Calico's Sony Walkman and a cassette tape were found alongside the road, leading Dole to speculate that Calico may have dropped them as a way to mark her trail. While several people recalled seeing Calico riding her bicycle that day, the bike itself was never recovered. No one witnessed her apparent abduction, but some witnesses reported a light-colored pickup truck, possibly a 1953 Ford with a camper shell, closely following her. At the time of her disappearance, she was wearing a medium-sized white t-shirt displaying First National Bank of Belen, along with white shorts featuring green stripes. Her attire also included white ankle socks and tennis shoes in a white and turquoise color scheme by Avia. Additionally, she adorned herself with a gold butterfly ring that had a diamond insert, a gold amethyst ring, and half-inch gold hoop earrings. She was 19 years old at the time of her vanishing, and sadly, was never spotted again. However, in July 1989, approximately 10 months following the disappearance of his 19-year-old stepdaughter, Tara Calico, near their residence in New Mexico, John Doel received an unsettling call from a friend. The friend relayed a bizarre discovery. A photograph had emerged in Florida depicting a young woman and a young boy who appeared to be bound and gagged. Strikingly, the woman bore a striking resemblance to Calico. This well-preserved color Polaroid was found by a woman in a convenience store parking lot and quickly garnered national attention. Both individuals in the photo faced the camera, their mouths taped and their arms bound behind them, suggesting they were restrained, possibly inside a vehicle, perhaps a van, and appeared to be in evident distress. Following the widespread circulation of the distressing photograph, various families stepped forward, asserting that they recognized the troubled individuals depicted. The Calico family was particularly convinced that the young woman in the picture was none other than Tara, suggesting that she might still be alive several months after her initial disappearance. However, within law enforcement circles, opinions were divided regarding the authenticity of the photo, leading different agencies to produce inconclusive findings. For many years, the Polaroid photograph has been a wellspring of both optimism and anguish. Fast forward nearly 35 years, and the Valencia County Sheriff's Office has disclosed that significant advancements have been achieved in the inquiry. Detectives reported collaborating with the FBI and now assert that there is ample evidence to apprehend and file charges against the presumed suspects in the case. But before we delve into the new developments in this case, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you can be updated for more videos from us. Now back to the video. In 2009, two decades after the discovery and media dissemination of the Polaroid photo, a series of events unfolded. Port St. Joe's police chief, David Barnes, received two letters, postmarked June 10th and August 10th, 2009, originating from Albuquerque, New Mexico. One of these letters contained a copy paper print of a young boy with sandy brown hair, upon which someone had drawn a black band in ink over the boy's mouth, reminiscent of the 1989 image. The second letter enclosed an original photo of the same boy. Subsequently, on August 12th, 
The Star newspaper in Port St. Joe received a third letter, also postmarked in Albuquerque on August 10th, featuring the identical image of a boy with black marker ink covering his mouth. It is worth noting that the identity of this boy has not been definitively established as the one in the previous photograph. None of these letters provided a return address or any information regarding the child's identity, prompting local officials to consider a potential link to Tara Calico's disappearance. Notably, these letters coincided with a self-proclaimed psychic's call concerning Calico, who claimed to have encountered a runaway in California, where they both worked in a strip club. Tragically, this girl was later killed. The caller suggested that her dreams indicated a possible connection between the runaway and Calico, with hints that Calico might be buried in California, but searches yielded no results. The photographs were subsequently handed over to the FBI for further investigation, with hopes of uncovering fingerprints or potential DNA evidence. Throughout the years, two additional Polaroid photographs, possibly featuring Calico, have emerged. The first was discovered near a construction site in Montecito, California, portraying a blurry image of a girl's face with tape covering her mouth, set against a backdrop of light blue striped fabric, reminiscent of the pillow in the Toyota van photo. Intriguingly, this photo was taken on film that wasn't available until June 1989. The second photo showcased a woman, loosely bound in gauze, with her eyes covered by more gauze and large black-framed glasses, accompanied by a male passenger on an Amtrak train. Strikingly, the film used for this photo wasn't accessible until February 1990. While Calico's mother believed the first photo to be of Tara, she considered the second a possible hoax. Her sister emphasized the striking resemblance between these photos, refraining from ruling them out, but acknowledging the family's need to identify numerous photographs, with only these three remaining uncertain. But before they could make any more discoveries about the case, in 2006, Patty passed away due to complications arising from a series of strokes after she and her husband John had relocated to Florida. Throughout her life, her daughter remained a constant presence in her thoughts, as attested by friends and family. Patty and John maintained a dedicated bedroom for Calico, where they would place gifts for her on every successive Christmas and birthday. In 2023, Significant developments emerged in Tara's case. Melinda Esquibel, who was Tara's former classmate and has dedicated years to investigating her disappearance, characterized the handling of the case as a grave miscarriage of justice. She expressed her belief that Tara's case had been seriously mishandled by the Valencia County Sheriff's Office and expressed hope that the right individuals are now overseeing the investigation to ensure that justice is ultimately served. Notably, in 2019, the FBI offered a £16,000 reward for information leading to Tara's whereabouts. Melinda arrived at a theory regarding Tara's disappearance after conducting extensive interviews with hundreds of individuals and compiling a case file comprising an astonishing 25,000 pieces of evidence. Based on her extensive years of investigative work, Melinda theorizes that a group of local boys might have intentionally knocked Tara off her bike, subsequently abducting and harming her. I have information suggesting the possibility that this boy and his friends were planning to abduct her four days before the day she was taken on September 16, 1988, she stated. This would indicate premeditation and careful consideration. Paying tribute to her beloved classmate, Melinda said, Tara had a bright light around her. She was fun, serious, smart, playful, and kind. That's how I remember her. She was an upperclassman, and we met in the marching band. She showed me kindness, and I will never forget that. She showed me kindness when she didn't have to. Last year, Lieutenant Rowland told the son, I believe the case could be solved. However, he acknowledged one of the challenges. There is very little physical evidence. He also mentioned that the FBI confirmed it is not Tara in the picture. A body has yet to be found. No DNA was recovered in the initial investigation. The investigation has been continuous for over 30 years now. But for now, Tara Calico's case remains buried in other cold cases of people disappearing so suddenly. Tara Calico's disappearance remains a heart-wrenching mystery, and her abduction, which has never been resolved, continues to cast a shadow of sadness and unanswered questions over the years. Do you think there's still hope for finding Tara Calico? We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hit the like button, click subscribe to find more videos like this on our channel, and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.